Senator Menendez, what purpose? Thank you, Mr. President. Questions of the author? Go ahead. Thank you, Senator Hall. Um, <clears throat> we're a little autopilot right now. Senator Hall, um, I have a few questions, and as you know, um, my staff has been working with your staff trying to work on some amendments. So let me, I just want to clarify. I want to thank you for taking these questions. Under this legislation, what would the effect be on any doctors who had previously provided gender uh, affirming care? Is there, is there anything that would happen to them? Would a patient's treatment continue? And if not, even if in the case of it were life-threatening, because some, we're here passing laws, but life is going on outside of this Capitol building. I'm just curious. I am concerned that will, are you expecting for treatment to automatically stop? Because that could endanger a child's health. Now, I believe, Senator, the way, it will not have any effect on what has been done in the past. Okay. So, and how, do we define the past as anything that's prior to the law passing, anything started? That's correct. Okay. Um, Senator Hall, will this affect uh, young people who are experiencing precocious puberty? Do you happen to know, uh, if you need me, do you know what precocious puberty is? Not, not familiar with that specific term. So, so precocious puberty is where children begin puberty at a much younger age. And it's exactly what gender-affirming care has historically been used for. And the reason I brought it up is because the language is in currently in House Bill 1399, uh, which is a companion to Senate Bill 1311, on page 7, lines 11 through 16. And so I'm concerned about kids who start puberty before very young age because that would concern me that you're trying to cut them off from being able to achieve this. No, this is, is one thing about it is that the data shows that those young children who are experiencing dysphoria, once they get to puberty, 90, roughly 90% of them realize who they really are. And so, so, no, it would not have an effect. So, Senator, I, I just heard you say nearly 90%. Where does that statistic come from? Because I, I have not seen that statistic, and I've heard that there are people that are using flawed data. This, this came from, a, uh, from one of the doctors in, in one, of the, one of the hearings. A doctor in a hearing. We would love to visit with you further uh, in order to find out, because I, I just want to make sure that we're using accurate data, because... We are seeing uh, data that is actually the opposite of, of what you're, you're stating. So a uh, question, how many parents or guardians of trans ch transgender children have you spoken to about the impact that depriving transgendered young people of their ability to seek life-saving care and treatment? Uh, have you spoken to any parents or guardians of these kids that you're, we're trying to cut off from this? Yes, I have. Okay, so one, two, three, four, uh, many? I spoke to enough to convince me that we need to do this to protect our children. Okay. Are you aware that there was a reported uh, uptick in visits to the emergency room for suicide attempt amongst transgendered young people when a very similar bill passed through the House in Arkansas? I'm not advised. Okay. So, uh, but you would be concerned that if we pass this, there would be an increase in the attempt for suicides, wouldn't you? Absolutely not. I think this will actually reduce the number of suicides because we have a very large number of those who go through the transition and maybe transition back again and then back. Uh, that suicide rate is, I believe, was about 20 times higher than the normal. Senator Hall, uh, I only have a few more questions. The bill allows for the same prescriptions and surgeries for intersex youth. Why does your bill intended only to target transgendered youth? It allows for intersex youth, but not transgendered. Why are transgendered the only targets? Because that's the way we decided to write the bill. We feel it should not affect the intersection. 
So, Senator, I know that you're a big supporter of the U.S. and the Texas constitutions, and I know that in those constitutional documents, you know that they guarantee every person the right to life, due process, and equal protection under the law. I believe that this piece of legislation is unconstitutional for at least three reasons. And so I was hoping that if you were made aware of that, that you might reconsider. I believe it violates the Equal Protection Clause by singling out transgendered people. You just mentioned that you wrote it that way because that's what the way you wanted to write it. And I, I'm just wondering, are you aware that in doing so, you're making your bill unconstitutional? Better answer your question. The intersex is a medical condition that should be outside of this bill. Okay. So, intersex youth are outside of the bill, and that's where it leads me to the fact that you are violating the Equal Protection Clause by singling out transgender people, and you uniquely harm them by denying access to medical care that's available to other groups. Are you aware that your bill would deny due process to transgendered youth? Are you aware of that? Say that again, I couldn't hear you. So, in your bill, you, are you aware that you deny them due process by depriving them medical and necessary treatment and infringing on bodily autonomy? You're, you're taking their autonomy away from them because you single them out. I would disagree with that respectfully, Senator. Okay. Uh, you, you have a right to disagree. Are you aware that your bill violates the parents' due process rights to care for their children and the doctor's rights to care for their patients in accordance with medical best practices? No, I would disagree with that. Oh, I, I appreciate the fact that you disagree. The good news is that the Constitution is very clear and that what the letters and the words on your bill are clear and that by sheer virtue of what the bill does, it denies due process and it will be found unconstitutional. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members.